Welcome. The topic today is the CNS depressants barbiturates and benzodiazepines. CNS depressants vary in the level of CNS inhibition they induce. This is determined by the type or class of drug and the dose delivered. To aid in bringing the patient from a tense to a calm state, tranquilizers may be used, which are also called anti-anxiety meds or anxiolytics. Further depression of the CNS to a state of drowsiness can be accomplished by administering sedatives, which reduce the desire for physical activity. For example, a sedative effect may be desirable for a patient that just had a heart attack to reduce the patient's desire for physical activity so the damaged heart has a chance to heal itself. Finally, to induce and maintain a state of sleep, hypnotics may be used. CNS depressants and sleep medications include barbiturates, benzodiazepines, alcohol, miscellaneous hypnotics like Ambien, and melatonin agonists, and orexin receptor antagonists. This video focuses on barbiturates and benzodiazepines. The neurotransmitter GABA accounts for 50% of all inhibitory activity in the brain and spinal cord. GABA receptors are found on chloride channels on neurons, and when GABA binds to its receptor, chloride is allowed to flood into the cell, causing the resting membrane potential to become more negative and hyperpolarized, making an electrical signal or action potential less likely. These chloride channels also have binding sites for benzodiazepines and barbiturates. When these drugs bind to their binding site on chloride channels, the inhibitory actions of GABA are enhanced. The chloride channel opens to a greater extent or for a longer period of time to increase CNS depression. The first class of CNS depressants included in this discussion are barbiturates. Barbiturates produce a dose-dependent depression of the CNS. This means that in low doses, barbiturates may be used as hypnotics to induce or maintain sleep. They may also be used to suppress seizures. In higher doses, barbiturates may be used in general anesthesia. The dose-dependent quality of CNS depression has no ceiling effect, making them one of the most dangerous classes of drugs. In other words, there is no limit to the level of CNS depression. At high doses, they suppress the life-sustaining reflexes maintained by the brainstem, such as respiratory centers, the cardioregulatory center, and the vasomotor center. Suppressing these will induce respiratory depression, coma, and even death. Barbiturates affect both non-REM and REM stages of the sleep cycle. Effects include an increase in stage 2 of non-REM sleep, a decrease in stages threes and 3 and 4 of non-REM sleep, and also REM interference. Those who suddenly discontinue treatment of barbiturates experience what is known as REM rebound, a state of increased dreaming, restlessness, anxiety, and nightmares. It's like the brain is trying to make up for the lost REM induced by the drug, and this may be manifest as nightmares. Barbiturates also cause liver enzyme induction, leading to a faster breakdown of subsequent doses of barbiturates, resulting in drug tolerance that decreases the effectiveness of the drug. The enzyme induction also leads to faster breakdown of other medications that use the same P450 enzymes for their metabolism. Hence, there are many potential drug-drug interactions with the barbiturate drug class. Barbiturates most often have a generic name that ends in barbitol. These three barbiturates differ in their duration of action. Phenobarbital, or luminal, is a long-acting barbiturate with a duration of 6 to 12 hours. Since it's long-acting, it can cause next-day drowsiness, known as a hangover effect. Pentobarbital, or nembutal, has an intermediate duration of 4 to 6 hours. Secobarbital, or secanal, is a short-acting barbiturate lasting 2 to 4 hours and is typically used for those who have trouble falling asleep but not staying asleep. Barbiturates can also have a severe withdrawal reaction upon discontinuation, and those using them should be monitored carefully for such reactions. Barbiturates may be used for insomnia, anxiety, as a pre-anesthetic for lethal injection, to treat neonatal seizures, for neonatal biliary atresia, where the bile ducts are narrowed, blocked, or absent, 
and they may also be used to help conjugate bilirubin in patients with Krigler-Najjar syndrome or Gilbert syndrome. Now let's discuss the CNS depressants known as benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines are commonly referred to as anti-anxiety drugs. In addition to the tranquilizing or anxiolytic effects, these drugs are also used as sedatives, hypnotics, muscle relaxants, and anticonvulsants. Benzodiazepines are also useful in the treatment of alcohol withdrawal symptoms, such as agitation, nervousness, muscle twitching, and seizures. They can also be used for conscious or procedural sedation. Benzodiazepines work by binding to the benzodiazepine receptor, BZD1, on the GABA chloride channels of neurons. As benzodiazepines bind to their receptors on chloride channels, the frequency of chloride channel opening is increased, letting more chloride into the cell. The reticular activating system, or RAS, consists of cell bodies located in the brainstem that send projections carrying excitatory signals to the cerebral cortex and other areas of the brain to keep it awake. Benzodiazepines inhibit the RAS neurons and therefore the cortex is excited less, resulting in sedation or a hypnotic effect. The limbic system is located in areas of the lower cerebrum and diencephalon. Inhibition of the limbic system by benzodiazepines decreases emotions such as anxiety, to have a tranquilizing or anti-anxiety effect. Inhibition of the cerebral cortex by benzodiazepines is useful for the treatment of seizures, giving them an anti-seizure effect. Benzodiazepines also work in the spinal cord to decrease action potential frequency in lower motor neurons to cause less excitation of skeletal muscles and relaxation. So you can see benzodiazepines have lots of uses related to the various CNS areas they inhibit. Benzodiazepines have multiple effects, some adverse and some beneficial. They interrupt the normal sleep cycle by causing an increase in stage two non-REM sleep and a decrease in stage four. Pregnancy is a contraindication for benzodiazepine use and these drugs are pregnancy category D and X. Taking benzodiazepines while pregnant may result in floppy infant syndrome, where the infant is born with hypotonia, hypothermia, lethargy, and breathing and feeding difficulties. There is also a slight increase in the risk for cleft palate in the newborn. Benzodiazepines don't cause the same enzyme induction that barbiturates do, therefore there is less metabolic tolerance induced by these drugs. Also, unlike barbiturates, benzodiazepines have a seedling effect, which limits their ability to cause CNS depression. This is definitely not to say they aren't potentially dangerous if used improperly. They shouldn't be mixed with other CNS depressants, such as alcohol, and they shouldn't be used while driving or operating machinery. Some patients may become dependent on these drugs and show drug-seeking behavior. Remember that most generic names for benzodiazepines end in LAM or PAM. They vary in their duration of action and categories include short-acting, intermediate-acting, and long-acting. They also vary in their onset of action. With those that are rapid-acting, effects occur within 15 minutes. For intermediate, effects occur within 15 to 30 minutes. With slow-acting, the drug doesn't take effect until 30 to 60 minutes after administration. The peak onset also varies among the different benzodiazepines. The duration of action of these drugs is determined by the half-life of the drug itself, or the half-life of the active metabolites that are produced as the body metabolizes the drug. The potency of the different benzodiazepines also varies, as the table shows comparative doses for oral benzodiazepines. Based on the information from the previously shown table, which of the following benzodiazepines do you suspect would cause next day drowsiness? Since flurazepam is longer acting benzodiazepine with a half-life of 40 to 100 hours, it is the most likely to cause significant next day drowsiness. Temazepam is an intermediate acting benzodiazepine with a half-life of 10 to 40 hours. For this reason, it causes significantly less next day drowsiness compared to flurazepam and is one of the preferred benzodiazepines for sleep aid. 
Triazolam is a short-acting benzodiazepine with a half-life of 1.5 to 3 hours. Due to its shorter duration of action, it may cause early morning awakenings. Although benzodiazepines cause tolerance and dependence, the effect is less compared to barbiturates. Benzodiazepines also don't induce metabolizing enzymes like barbiturates do. Furthermore, there is a benzodiazepine antidote available for benzodiazepine overdose, known as flumazenil. There is no specific antidote for barbiturate overdose. Now for some questions. Please pause the video and think of your answers. If you answer the following, you are correct. Thanks for watching.